Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about pair production. Pair production is a quantum phenomena where a photon of light um, converts its energy into mass. And more importantly, to conserve many parts of the universe, you have to create a particle and an antiparticle. So what I've got here is I've got a photon of light coming in with an energy. And remember the energy formula is energy equals H, which is Planck's constant, times the frequency of the light. It could also be HC over lambda as well. Now this photon's come in and this photon has made an electron and an anti-electron, also known as a positron. The reason that you must have a particle and an antiparticle is to conserve charge. Photons don't have charge. But when they're creating objects like protons, or in this case an electron, to conserve charge, there must be an antiparticle being emitted. So you always have pair production with a particle and an antiparticle made. Now, using the data sheet, you can find the rest mass energy of the um, particle. So in here, I could find for an electron was 0.51099 mega electron volts. And this is also the energy, the rest mass energy for um, a positron as well, because remember they are the same mass. This means this photon must have a minimum amount of energy to create these in the first place, because energy must be conserved. So on this side, I have 2 times 0 0.51099 mega electron volts, which is, if I just go and grab a calculator, so here, 2 times 0 0.51099 and that is 1.21998 mega electron volts. This means to just even create these two um, particles here, this particle and its antiparticle, this is, must be the minimum energy of my photon. So, is that. So let's try and find out the frequency of my photon here. So first of all, I must convert this into joules. Okay, and remember to do that, you must first of all get it into electron volts and then times it by the charge 10 to the minus 19 of an electron. So it's 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that is 1.6. 4 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Okay. Again, it's a good sanity check. A photon should be a small amount of energy. You shouldn't have something into the, the giga or anything like that. You should always have something very small like minus 13. So putting it into this here, I have 1.64 times 10 to the minus 13 equals... <coughs> do apologise... Uh, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times by frequency. So my frequency is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, 2.47 times 10 to the 20 hertz. <coughs> and my wavelength would be... Th uh, speed of light divided by the frequency, so that's 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2.47 times 10 to the 20. Um, 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by that. Choo -choo, times 10 to the minus 12 metres. So that there is my wavelength, my minimum wavelength of my photon that could create an electron and its anti-electron. If I had a photon that was a little bit more than that, these two particles and its antiparticle would gain a little bit of kinetic energy. So if my photon, for example, had 1.8 times 10 to the minus 13 joules of energy, what would happen is these two would gain kinetic energy based on that. 
The angle, another point to note, is the angle that they are emitted at would both be the same. This is to conserve momentum, and this will be talked about more in the mechanics module. So that is pair production. <laughs>